Hi everyone and welcome. Today's a little bit of a different video. I'm not going to be on camera today because we're going to be focusing on Lisa Eldridge's new lipstick shades that are going to be coming out either tomorrow or today depending on how quickly I can edit this. They're launching at 4 p.m. UK time on Friday, July 8th. So that's when these new colors are going to be available to order. So I just wanted to go through. She's done a whole video on her own channel which you've probably seen by now where she goes through all the new shades and talks about the formulas and applies all the shades on herself. So that video is a main resource for this video here, as well as her website where she has more pictures and shade descriptions and formula descriptions. And I'm just going to be talking about my own thoughts on these colors, what other colors they might remind me of from her range, or even from a couple of other lipstick ranges that I'm familiar with. I just wanted to talk through the shades and the formulas, and I'm going to be starting out actually with the Insanely Saturated formula. So she has three new shades of Insanely Saturated that are going to be joining the two existing shades, which will be back in stock skyscraper rose and rainbow spill and i'll mention right now i have a lot of other videos on lisa eldridge lipstick so i'm going to link my lisa eldridge playlist in the description box and in those you'll be able to see me lip swatching all of the existing shades of lisa eldridge lipsticks i'm a completionist with her lipstick so i have every single one that has released and I intend to buy every single one that releases in the future, including in this release. So starting with the Insanely Saturated formula, I'm just going to read what her website says about this formula. So pigmented and so creamy, a truly dreamy texture that glides on seamlessly and gives 100% full coverage with a demi-matte finish and weightless feel. It can also be daubed on as a light stain for a more subtle effect. So you might wonder what's the difference between the Insanely Saturated and her True Velvet formula. So I'm just gonna read the True Velvet description as well. There are no new True Velvets being launched right now, but I just wanna kind of see a little bit of a comparison between those two formulas. She says about the True Velvets, saturated and highly pigmented lipstick with a beautiful True Velvet effect on the surface of the bullet, which looks exactly like velvet fabric. The formulation is a creamy hydrating matte with a slight sheen. It's not a flat matte. Color is long wearing and non-drying on the lips. So in my experience, these two formulas are actually fairly similar in that they're both extremely pigmented, creamy, they're mattes but not flat, and they feel comfortable on the lips. I would say for me the main difference is that the Insanely Saturated just feel a little bit thinner. It feels like you need less of the actual product to get a real full coverage. The velvets are of course very very pigmented as well, but it's just that the saturated ones feel just a little bit thinner, I guess, and a little bit more lightweight and are perhaps slightly less matte because they're described as a demi-matte while the velvets are described as a, a velvet matte. So the shade New Wave is an unashamedly bold magenta, modern yet classic, subversive yet soft. With its cool blue undertones, this statement cyclamen shade is shot through with edgy glamour and electronica chic. Now my thoughts on the New Wave shade, when it comes to Lisa's range, it reminds me most of her Delilah Gloss, which is a similar kind of purpley cyclamen type shade. It also reminds me of Velvet Carnival, but I think Velvet Carnival looks to be a lot more pink, where I'm seeing a lot more purple in New Wave, but they both have that real kind of bright, neon-y, intense vibe. What New Wave actually reminds me most of is a MAC lipstick called Flat Out Fabulous. Flat Out Fabulous might be a little bit less purpley than New Wave, but Flat Out Fabulous is a similar kind of really bright, purpley, reddish, cyclamen type shade. But I'm thinking from looking at the pictures at least that New Wave might be even more purpley. Now moving on to Strawberry Shock, a sun-filtered red that hides a dash of shocking punk pink extremity at its heart. A bright, shouty, strawberry daiquiri hue that instantly energizes. A true Goldilocks of bright reds, it's neither too cool nor too warm. I love the way she describes this one and she said this in her video too, that the base tone is a very bright, shocking pink, but then it's kind of filtered over 
by a more muted tone. And that's the type of thing that I think Lisa Eldridge does so well, where she's mixing these bright tones with more muted tones, so you get really unique shades in the end. And because of that, the shades tend to, I think, work well on a variety of skin tones and preferences. Strawberry Shock, to me, reminds me most of Atomic Cherry, which is a lucent shade in Lisa's range. Obviously, Atomic Cherry is a sheer. Strawberry Shock is extremely pigmented and more matte, but the tones have similar vibes to me, although I think that it's possible that Atomic Cherry is a little bit more kind of warm and orangey and a little bit less pink than Strawberry Shock, but it's really hard to tell without seeing the colors in person and comparing them in person. And I just want to do a quick disclaimer here. I forgot to mention that for these comparisons that I'm showing you on the screen, you've probably noticed by now, I'm focusing mainly on the lightest skin tone because those are the pictures that I focus on when I'm trying to figure out the differences between the colors and determine how they might look on me because that's closest to my skin tone. But if you go on her website, you'll see she has a variety of skin tones wearing all of the shades so you can get an idea of what is closest to you. And I also wanted to just mention that right now I'm only going off of Lisa's video and the content on her website because that's all I have to go off of. Often pictures online will look very different from what the shade actually looks like in person. So I'm just going off the only information that I can right now, which is what I'm seeing online. I'm also talking about shade comparisons and how I think they might compare to one another, but Lisa mentioned in her video that if you go on her Instagram page, she's going to be sharing comparisons with other shades in her range on there. So that's going to be a really good resource to actually be able to see the shades next to one another. Moving on to Sunday Matinee, and this is the Insanely Saturated that I think I will be getting the most use out of. It just seems to be the most kind of everyday friendly type shade. It's described as a soft pouty medium pink with a hint of warmth. Never washed out or too try hard, it's as insouciant and laid back as a Sunday spent watching your favorite classic film. This looks like a beautiful kind of just classic medium pink. It does look like it has more warmth than cool in it, but she did say I think that it has a little bit of cool in there to balance it out. It looks like a beautiful shade. I'm really excited to try that one. To me, it reminds me of Velvet Petal a little bit, but maybe a little bit more saturated, kind of a bit brighter, richer, and warmer. That's what I'm thinking. I think it also looks like it has a similar feel to Je ne sais quoi, which is one of the lucent shades that we're going to be talking about in a moment but it might be maybe a little bit less coral and um, a little bit brighter or lighter than je ne sais quoi. So let's move on to the lucent shades and since I was just talking about it let's talk about je ne sais quoi now. Je ne sais quoi is described as hard to pin down. It's a warm creamy coral, its summery magic lies in the duality of its vibrancy and subtlety. Somehow this lively shade manages to brighten the face without being an overtly bright shade. That sounds very interesting to me. I like the sounds of that. And when I'm looking at Je ne sais quoi, it makes me think of a couple of different shades. It kind of makes me think of Rose Official because it looks like it has a similar depth to Rose Official, but definitely warmer than that. Rose Official is more of a cool, kind of bluer based pink, although with some brown that neutralizes it. So think of Sunday Matinee, which I just spoke of, and Velvet Petal as well. It looks quite similar to Je ne sais quoi, although I'd say Je ne sais quoi looks like it has a richer, again, warmer tone due to the coral that's in there. It also makes me think of Kitten Mischief, but I think, again, it's a darker, kind of richer, um, and a little bit pinker, actually, than Kitten Mischief, which might lean a little bit more into the brown area. Je ne sais quoi is another one that I think I'm probably going to get quite a lot of use out of. Next up, let's talk about Le Mépris a sublimely nuanced but wearable soft beigey hue that's straight out of a Jean-Luc Godard masterpiece. Think Brigitte Bardot, tousled bouffant hair and kissable lips. This looks beautiful. I'm very excited about this one and this is another that I think is going to be quite popular with me personally. The first thing I think of when I look at this shade is Velvet Intrigue, which was my favorite of her velvets from her fall 2021 release. When I look at these colors side by side, they look very similar to me, obviously with different formulas. Velvet Intrigue is a matte and a much more highly saturated color, 
but the two tones look quite similar to me and that makes me really excited because I love Velvet Intrigue for myself. I think it's a great kind of everyday type color that can go with any type of makeup look but because it's a matte I'm just not inclined to wear it as often on an everyday basis but if Le Mépris is as similar to it as I think it is and it's in that lucent formula I think it's going to be perfect. I also think of Kitten Mischief when I look at Le Mépris and Kitten Mischief was my favorite in last summer's release and Le Mépris looks to be a little bit lighter and kind of browner or beiger than Kitten Mischief, which is pulling a little bit pinker than Le Mépris from the look of these pictures. And that excites me too, because I do love Kitten Mischief as an everyday type color as well. Pretty much goes with any look, but it can be a little bit brighter and a little bit more into the pink category. So I'm very excited to see this kind of more nude and beiger version perhaps of Kitten Mischief. I also think of Velvet Fawn when I look at Le Mépris and I think Velvet Fawn is just more muted and a little bit cooler. The way that Lisa described Le Mépris in her video was quite interesting because it, she said it can give that feel, that vibe of that kind of 60s Brigitte Bardot look, but it just has a little bit more color in it and she even said those types of beigey, light beigey colors often wash her out but this color doesn't do that. So that's very exciting to me because I love that type of a look, but often find the same thing that those colors can really wash me out. And that description of it made me think of my Armani Lip Power Lipstick in the shade 102, which has a similar effect on me. It's um, that really nice light kind of beigey nude, but it just has a little bit more going on with it that makes it really wearable for me. So I'm curious to compare those shades as well. Next let's talk about Meet Me in Berlin. This is a deliciously rich tan shade which delivers to various intensities as a brown nude across all skin tones. Inspired by a shoot Lisa worked on in East Berlin in the early 2000s, there's a hint of the avant-garde and counterculture feel to this one. This is another one that I think is going to be pretty popular with me. It's quite a brown shade, but not too dark. And it reminds me of both Velvet Affair and Velvet Decade. It kind of looks like it's sort of in between those two shades. Velvet Decade is obviously a very deep shade, um, very intense, but I think they're giving similar vibes in the pictures here. And I'm really excited to have that type of a shade in a lucent formula because I love a brownish lip. I just find that's really comfortable for me, really easy for me to wear and having it in the Lucent formula, it's gonna be great to be able to just dab that on as a light stain where it's almost just looking like my lips, but slightly enhanced, or you can build it up and get a little bit more of a dramatic effect. But I think that it seems to be a color that is hopefully going to agree with my personal preferences and undertones really well. So I'm very hopeful for that shade. Next up is Rosy Shell, which is a beautiful pink tone. And in the description, she says, the delicate coastal pink hue of rose cup seashells are brought to lucent life in this deliciously pretty shade, a light pink with a mix of cool and warm undertones. Rosy Shell is a picnic on the beach in July without the sand in your sandwiches. This color was inspired by rose cup seashells and it looks beautiful, like a really nice fresh pink. This is another one she said, it has a mix of cool and warm tones, but this one leans more to the cool side and I can definitely see that looking at the pictures. For me personally, this probably isn't going to be an everyday type shade, although I think that if I pair it with a warmer lip liner, it might be able to work really nicely. But this is gonna be the type of shade that is great for people with cooler tones or people who prefer a little bit of a cooler toned pink lipstick. It reminds me of the Charm Gloss, which is actually one of my favorites. I love the Charm Gloss. To me, it's special because it is that cooler pink, but is somehow more wearable on me, and I prefer, and I think I suit warmer tones a little bit more easily. But I think because of the way that, again, the shade is balanced, and also because the gloss is a more sheer formula, it allows a little bit of your natural lip tone to show through, 
just makes that type of a shade a little bit more wearable and I'm hoping the same will be true with Rosy Shell. It just looks like such a fresh youthful color so I'm very excited to try that but it's definitely more of a kind of blue based pink by the looks of it and when I look at it I also think of Dance Card which is more of a coral, it's more of a peachy pink although it has some blue undertones. Rosy Shell looks really more in the true pink category. It also reminds me of Velvet Beauty, but I think Velvet Beauty is just a richer, deeper color, also perhaps a little bit more muted than Rosy Shell, which looks quite bright and a little bit almost kind of pastel, like it has more white mixed into the base. Next, let's talk about Wonder Wheel, which what a beautiful, bright, vibrant shade. The description says, roll up, roll up for this deliciously juicy popsicle pink shade. A mouth-wateringly vibrant reddish pink that alights lips with all the heady nostalgic fun of the ferris wheel so this is a very kind of carnival inspired color by the sounds of it and it reminds me most of atomic cherry when i compare the two shades next to one another they look similar in intensity and brightness and to be about the same value in terms of their depth but atomic cherry is more of a coral red where Wonder Wheel looks like more of almost like a coral pink. They both seem to have a little bit of that coral quality, but one is just more red and one is more pink. Wonder Wheel also reminds me of Rainbow Spill. And when I look at those two next to each other, I can see that they don't look like exactly the same tones. Rainbow Spill still looks a little bit more pink, it is a very warm pink, but it does have some blue undertones, and I don't see as much of that when I'm looking at the Wonder Wheel picture, but it, it's hard to tell because of the different formulas, and Wonder Wheel is more of a sheer formula, so it's going to show more of the natural lip color through it, and just the intensity of the color isn't going to be quite as much as you're seeing with the saturated shades, but I think those two look like they have kind of a similar kind of watermelony pink type feel. Very pretty and looks beautiful for summertime. Next up, let's talk about Palazzo. And of the more rich, bright, deeper colors, this is the one that I think is going to suit me personally the best. I have a fairly neutral skin tone, but I lean a little bit more toward the warm side, I think, or more toward kind of the yellowy, even slightly olive side. That's what I'm working with personally. The description of Palazzo says, take a Roman holiday with this rich, deep, neutral red inspired by the interiors of the richly decorous palaces of Italy, as regal as a Renaissance portrait, yet as exhilarating as a ride through Rome on a Vespa. Again, I love how Lisa seems to be combining bright vibrancy with more muted tones to create unique shades. When I look at Palazzo, it reminds me of a few of her velvets. It makes me think of Velvet Jazz first, and I think that's probably what it would be most similar to in terms of the feel, because Velvet Jazz is another one that is a neutral red, and she's describing Palazzo as a neutral red as well. It has a good mix of cool and warm. It doesn't pull really far in either direction. It's a true neutral. It also makes me think of Velvet Cinnabar and Velvet Dragon. I think that those are probably warmer tones and just a little bit more orangey overall, but I, it might have a similar kind of feel to those sort of vampy, deeper reds. I'm also curious to see how Palazzo would compare to Atomic Cherry. They look like very different tones. I think Palazzo is browner and earthier than Atomic Cherry, which is more bright and vibrant, but it'll be interesting to see how they compare to each other in real life. And last but not least of the new shades, we have Night Thoughts, which is a very deep shade. The description says it's a deep creme de cassis saturnine shade with a heart of darkness a sensual black cherry hue that suits all skin tones. One swipe will give you the mauvey veneer of a just bitten lip. Whilst built up, it gives a gorgeous depth, as profound and deep as the conversations with friends that carry through the night. This one immediately made me think of Velvet Midnight. It seems to be of a similar depth. Obviously, again, different formulas and finishes here but they seem to have quite similar tones and depths. So I think if you were a fan of Velvet Midnight, you might love Night Thoughts. It also makes me think of Velvet Decade a little bit, just because, again, it's a very deep tone. I think Velvet Decade is probably more brown and a little bit warmer than Night Thoughts, but I think you could get a similar effect to what you would from a sheer version of Velvet Decade if you used Night Thoughts paired with a warmer lip liner because Night Thoughts is sheer, so it's a little bit more malleable in tone 
depending on what type of lip liner you pair it with. So those are all my thoughts right now. I haven't yet seen any of Lisa's comparisons on her Instagram at the time I'm filming this. She hasn't posted any of those yet, but I just wanted to share my thoughts and the shades that I'm most excited for. As I said, I am planning to get all of them because that's how I roll with Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. Um, but there are certain ones, of course, that I, I'm a little bit more excited for and that I think are going to suit me personally better. I did a little breakdown of what I think are the warms, the cools, and the neutrals. Now, this is just my opinion. This is just what I'm seeing in the pictures that I'm looking at. So obviously I have not seen any of these in person or experienced them, but from what I'm seeing, I feel like the shades that lean more into the warm category are Le Mepris, Meet Me in Berlin, Je Ne Sais Quoi, Wonder Wheel, Palazzo, and Strawberry Shock. And then I think the ones that are leaning more into the cool category are Rosy Shell, Night Thoughts, and New Wave. I think Sunday Matinee looks to be more of a neutral, but I probably should have just put it in the warm category. It's a little bit more of a, a warm shade, but I usually find that Lisa's shades don't lean too far in any direction because she does such a great job of balancing the tones, but there are definitely certain ones that are going to pull more into the cool or more into the warm category. And of course it just depends on the shade. Palazzo, for example, is a red, so to me a red is always inherently warm because I just think red is a warm color, but Palazzo is a neutral red, so it has that balance of the cool and warm, and of course you can get cool or warm versions of any color. It's just that I think of some as more inherently warm or more inherently cool. So those are my thoughts on the new shades. I'm so excited to try these out and I'm so excited to see everyone else's thoughts and see what shades others pick up and how they look on everyone. And I just want to let you know that Lisa Eldridge's customer service is excellent. So if you have any questions about how shades compare or which shades might be good for you, I would definitely recommend contacting her customer service. You can do that on her Instagram. You can DM her, or I think you can email her customer service email as well. And from what I hear, they, they're they very helpful with helping people to pick shades that will work best for them and answering any questions that you might have. So that's it for me for this video. Let me know if you have any questions for me in the comment section below. If you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would love for you to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I will see you in my next video. Bye.